We'll talk about that in just a second, but good morning. Welcome. We are um, going to talk today about social media content. My name is Nicole Boynton and I am TNT's Director of Education. So I get the absolute fun job of teaching through Zoom today. If you note, um, let me know, shoot a um, message in chat or unmute yourself if you cannot see the screen, but you should be able to see the slides up on the screen right now. And on that screen, you should be able to see the link to download the slides. Um, we're gonna go through them right now during class, so you don't necessarily need them until afterwards, but bit.ly forward slash TNT content will get you to the slides. Uh, I'm admitting a couple more participants. So if you wanna download the slides later on, the link is in the chat. It's bit.ly forward slash TNT content. And if you have questions throughout the course, please feel free to drop them into the chat. We've got um, over 50 people on here, so it can get a little crazy if everybody is trying to ask questions. Um, but please feel free to utilize the chat for that feature and put yourself on mute if you would, please. All right, we are going to get started. Actually, I'm gonna keep, we've still got people jumping on. All right, so welcome, good morning. Thanks for taking your time out to join us. We are going to talk today about social media content and this will include what is content how to plan content, including figuring out what your goal is, what different types of content are available, what does your audience want? We're gonna show you how to do an audit of your current social media to determine what works best and is what most, what's most successful for you, how often and when to post, hashtags, then we'll go through the calendar that we've created for you that you can use as an outline for what to post and this will give you a monthly um, calendar that you can reuse. Um, scheduling content, how to post things in advance. Keywords that you can use to help get people attracted to what you're posting. And then great hooks and persuasive words that will keep people engaged. All right. So again, thanks for being here. Um, if you will take a second to look at your uh, Zoom toolbar, which if you are on a computer is probably up towards the top of your screen. And at the very far left, there is a microphone and you can click on that to mute and unmute yourself. There is a stop video and start video. If you don't wanna be on screen, you can stop your video or you can turn your video on, assuming you have a camera on the, the device that you're using. And then further over, you may have to click on more and you can get to the chat feature. And through the chat, you have the ability to decide if you wanna send a chat to a specific person or if you wanna send it to the whole group. And uh, if you have questions, just stop, let us know again through chat or unmute yourself. All right, so we're gonna get started. What is social media content? A lot of times when we think about content, we tend to think about it as text, as things that we are typing, but content is actually much more than that. Marketers hope to earn loyalty and influence decisions by publishing useful, entertaining, or educational content. And I want you to focus on those words, useful, entertaining, and educational. That content is not about selling real estate. <laughs> content is about being useful and helpful. Okay, that's the majority of what we want to focus, particularly <coughs> in an environment like we are in right now, that we want to make sure we are not being obnoxious, that we are being helpful, coming from contribution, and providing things that will help our audience rather than alienate them. I've even read a statistic lately that um, many people at this point prefer to even see content that has people not touching, that it's already making us cringe when we see replays of movies and things where people are hugging or shaking hands or touching because we are already ingrained to think, no, they need to be six feet apart. So it's interesting how quickly that, that takes um, shape. All right. Um, for content, it is more than just text. 
people learn differently. And so therefore you have to make sure that you're providing content in ways that are more than just one type. So that appeals to people that learn, some learn from reading, some learn from watching videos. So you wanna make sure that you have a mixed media of content so that you appeal to all of those people. The content that you post communicates who you are as a brand. You want to, again, make sure that you mix different types of content so you adhere to diverse learning styles. It should be engaging. And if you ever sit down and talk to me about social media, I am very adamant that it's not about the likes. It's not about the numbers. Social media is about having a conversation. It's about building a relationship and it's about the engagement. So when I talk about engagement, we're talking about having a two-way conversation. You post a question and people respond or you post something and people like it and comment or reshare it. That counts much more than the number of followers that you have because if your followers are not liking and commenting and engaging, based on the algorithms for social media, you will disappear from their newsfeed. That the more that they engage, the more that they like and comment, the more often you will show up in their newsfeed. Everything that you post doesn't get shown to everyone. It is based on how the algorithm works, okay? And one of the leading components of that, again, is whether people engage in your content and whether you engage back in theirs. All right, so examples of content include text, photos, videos. And when I say videos, that doesn't mean that you have to be on camera. I know we're not comfortable on camera. I'm not comfortable on camera and y'all are all staring at my face. So that can also be screencast where you film something that you are doing on screen. It can be walking through a house where you are not showing your face, but you are behind the screen and talking over or animation and GIFs. All right, best practices for content, five Ps, page. In the case of Facebook, you wanna make sure that you are always marketing on a business page rather than your personal profile. Now you can post on the business and share to your personal, but in order to abide by Facebook's terms of service, which state that you must be, um, you must utilize a business page for commercial services. And they say primarily for commercial services, you must use a business page. So that means they don't want you selling real estate primarily on your personal profile. Now, what primarily means, that's kind of up to Facebook. Is that one out of five? Is that one out of 10? Is that one out of 100? I don't know. It's whatever Facebook decides that day. So I do want you to be aware that the majority of your marketing should be done on your business page. Not everybody adheres to that. I get it, but you know better. So now hopefully you do better. Number two, second P is personalize. It is very important that people get a sense of who you are on your social media. That includes your business page. While I want you to be professional, I also want you to be personable. When I sold real estate back a million years ago, there were several of us that started all at the same time. We all went through training together. We were all rookies together. And even though I'd grown up in a real estate family and thought I knew everything, um, I didn't. And what was interesting is let's say there were five of us, the one agent that did the best, that had the same skill sets really as the rest of us, has had the same little amount of experience as the rest of us, she outsold everybody for one simple reason. Her website was based around the fact that she rescued greyhound dogs, that she was a dog person, and the work that she did with greyhound nonprofits, and people began to gravitate to her because she was a dog person, right? And we want to work with people we deem to be like us. And truly, it's so much easier to, when you're driving around with somebody a couple of months from now, in a car and showing them houses, it's so much easier to, to spend a day showing houses to somebody that you have things in common with. And being able to showcase who you are and your personality on your social media really helps you to draw an audience that is similar to you and to be able to work with people that you have things in common with. So it's important that you aren't just all professional, but you show your personal side. In particular, right now, there's so much more of it with us working from home as much as possible. The personal and the business really blend together. I'll be surprised if my kids don't come rushing in my room or there's not a dog jumping on me at some point during this class. 
Uh, P number three is professional picture. On your business page, I do not want you to have a selfie. I want you to make sure you do have a professional picture. And after that, you know, do whatever you want. Post pictures that do show who you are, that show you out working in the community. But that very first picture on that business page or on your Instagram business page should be professional. And there's always lots of good opportunities at TNT. You'll notice we send out stuff all the time for places doing free headshots or headshots that are less expensive than going to um, a regular professional photographer. Number four is privacy. Settings change. And right now you're seeing things change fast and furiously. We just last night, I got a text from one of my sales reps that said, hey, there's a um, password required on the meeting for our class today, where Zoom made security changes just last night or just over the weekend that now required for us to have a password on this meeting. Well, that was a brand new change and we thought we were good and we were set up to go, but as settings change and, and privacy concerns come up, it's important that you know if you think your Facebook is set one way where people only see specific things, that might not be the case if Facebook makes a change, if Instagram makes a change, if Zoom makes a change. It's important that you always stay up to date on what is happening so what you think is private is truly private. And then number five is patience. And this is something I, in particular, have to learn. Um, patience is something we all have to use that you know real estate is not a fast business. You don't get a client on day one, close them on day two, um, get paid on day three. It just doesn't work that way. It's just not a fast really? process. So it's important also, that, that we- Posting on social media. Um, like, I don't know all these things. Guys, make sure that you're on mute too, please. Um, He's so in there. It, it's important that you he came out and he's hollering. Yeah, this is gonna be boring. Hi guys, we can hear you. Let's make sure oh. you're on mute. Sorry that it's boring, especially. <laughs> all right. Um, for some reason, my mute all button isn't working. So if y'all will make sure you're muted, we appreciate it. Um, and we'll try and make it more exciting too. All right, so patience is important in everything. Number two, comment, share, like, and thank. It is in critical in social media, again, to please the algorithms and because if we're having a conversation, if we are standing in a room together and you said to me, Nicole, your class was amazing. It was nowhere near boring. And I turned around and walked away. That would be a problem, right? Instead, I would want to acknowledge you and say, thank you. That's wonderful. I appreciate your um, constructive criticism. I appreciate your compliment, whatever it is. And it's the same on social media, that if somebody posts on your page and says, great listing, or says, how are you doing, that you're able to respond and reply. We don't want to ever turn our backs and not be um, replying and responding when someone says something to us. Okay, brand yourself and market without selling. Uh, nobody wants a used car salesman. So we wanna make sure you are able to market yourself by providing helpful and useful stuff versus being a salesperson. Now, um, I was married to a used car salesman, so I can say that and laugh about it, but it's true, right? Nobody really wants to be sold to. We wanna be entertained, we wanna have good, useful stuff that we care about and that's pertinent to our life. My favorite instance of that is what I have deemed the community impact factor. Hopefully y'all are familiar with community impact. Uh, community impact is one of my favorite things to read. And for those of y'all that read it, why do you like to read it? Is it because it has ads? No, we don't read it for the ads. It does have ads, but it's about 20% ads, right? 80% of it is good, useful information. It's hyper local. It's stuff you may not read anywhere else. It's new restaurants coming to the area. It's stuff about schools. It's stuff about toll roads. It's about healthcare. All of those things impact real estate and real estate prices, right? That's the kind of information I want you to focus on posting for your content, okay? Community impact, 80% useful, helpful. In the back, they have those ads. That's not why we read it, but the ads are there. Your business should be structured in that same 80-20 rule. 
And number five, don't go there right now. And I am going to add one more to this. Politics, religion, inappropriate or controversial. And right now I'm gonna also add, especially negativity. It is super easy to be a victim right now. And I want y'all to be the ones that are positive, that you show, be the light, be the helper, rather than being a victim. Because it's easy for us to get caught up in that mindset. And we're gonna be positive. We're gonna stay away from politics. We're gonna stay away from religion, inappropriate stuff and controversial stuff. Not because you don't have an opinion, because clearly we all do. The difference is that people get offended very easily. And right now we're all, you know, sort of edgy, um, feeling like we're kind of trapped in our houses. It's important that we keep that in mind and we're sensitive to the things that we're posting and how it can affect others. I had an agent tell me this story is probably four or five years old now, but I had an agent sitting across from me at a table and she said, Nicole, I have a Facebook story for you. I was like, great, tell me about it. She said, I lost a deal because of Facebook. Well, that's rather unfortunate. Okay, tell me more. She went on to say that she had a previous client that had bought and sold with her several times who had not used her for their last purchase. And when she picked up the phone and called this client, which is more than more, most of us would probably do, we'd probably just mark it off, take them off the Christmas card list and keep going. She picked up the phone and called the client and said, what happened? Why didn't you use me? And this client told her that they had not used her for their last sale because she hadn't liked the post on, the face, on her Facebook page, on the client's Facebook page, where she announced her daughter was getting married. So let that sink in for a minute. She got offended because this agent hadn't liked a post about her daughter getting married. And there's so many factors to that. This agent is rarely on social media to begin with. She may not have seen the post. I mean, there could have been a thousand factors, but that's how sensitive people are, that it really is crazy. Yes, you, Nikki, you do almost have to live online to hope you don't alienate or make somebody upset. All right, number six, and I am so silly that I even own this domain, what would your mama say? I want you to have some little, you know, angel birdie on your shoulder that says to you, maybe I need to think twice before I post this, or just stop and think, what would my mom say? What would my kids say? What would my grandfather say? But there should be some sort of second check before you hit post that you ask yourself, is this appropriate to post? Will I feel good about this tomorrow? Okay. All right. And then the four E's, very similar to the stuff we just talked about, expert, educate, entertain, and engage. Ask yourself if what you're posting is something you would want to read, right? Is it something that is useful and helpful? You can teach people how to do things. You can entertain them by just being silly. There's a lot of people doing TikTok videos right now, which are just, you know, silly, fast videos that they're posting on social media. Um, I posted yesterday about my kids making slime. So you just never know. Um, experts, you have so many expertises in real estate. You can utilize those and post about your expertise without being annoying. And then engaging, real-time conversations, ask questions and get people to respond. Do live videos where people are asking questions. Creative ways to share content. Again, it's not just about text. Could be um, a blog, you could go live, you can interview somebody, you can use Zoom to do that. Um, share relevant info from statistics. Um, ABOR has statistics, Texas A&M has statistics, uh, TNT has statistics. You can utilize any of that stuff and provide good, useful, helpful info. Meaningful quotes, adding emojis, uh, organizing a contest. There are lots of ways to share content. I found this really interesting. This is from Sprout Social, who is a big leader in the social media space. Why do consumers unfollow brands? Um, so. I would have thought it was just that they're annoying, right? They're annoying, they post too much stuff, they're too salesy. But really the biggest is that they provide poor customer service. They unfollow them. It's not like they stop doing business with them and stop going to the store, right? It, let's say this is, you know, Target. They didn't go because Target provided poor customer service and they were out of toilet paper at the store. 
it was because online they provided poor customer service. And so what does that mean to you? That means when people are asking questions, you're not responding or you're not taking their concerns seriously, that you are um, not available when they need help, that you don't even have some kind of automated when you're away, that there's an automated ch chat feature that comes up and says, we're away from social media, we'll contact you within 24 hours. But whatever poor customer service online is, to me, that's basically more likely a lack of response that is something that we can make sure that we stay in front of. All right, so let's talk about Facebook insights. Um, on Facebook, with your business page, and this is one of the reasons that Facebook wants you to use your business page versus your personal. On your business page, you have what's called insights. So if you log into your page, you'll see the fourth tab over is called insights. You may have never looked at it, but insights give you really the most valuable information that is out there on your Facebook page to tell you what time to post, what day of the week to post, and what type of content to post. So here's a screenshot of our TNT Facebook insights. And on February 5th, you can see that we posted an article about Elon Musk bringing a gigafactory possibly to Texas. You can see it was on 2 5 of 20 at 7 34 p.m. Then if you scroll over, you see it was a link. That's the type of content. It reached 387 people. And then again, I care less about how many people. I care more about how many people engaged. 23 people clicked on it and five people reacted, commented, or shared. Okay. And if you scroll down and you look at some of these other ones, the numbers were less. Now, this video that you see here that has 22,000, that one's a bit of an anomaly because that actually had paid um, activity involved with it. So that one, we're gonna throw that one out because it doesn't count since it has paid information. But the point here is that because this post reached 387 people, meaning Facebook showed this post to more people, Remember, with the algorithm, Facebook doesn't show your post to everybody. Even if we have a thousand followers, they do not show that post to a thousand people. If people have not engaged with our brand lately, we have not engaged with them, they are not going to see what we post. And so Facebook showed this to 387 people, and then 23 out of those clicked on it, five of them then liked it, thanked it, um, reshared, did something additional with it. What I can take from that is that 2-5, I would go see, was that a Tuesday? And if it's Tuesdays, then I know Tuesdays work really well for me. And also 7.34 p.m. is better for me. Once I start to notice trends where here's one at 7.15 a.m. that had 543 reached, right? Once I start to see a trend, 7.30 p.m., 7.15 a.m., then I'm going to start to focus on posting at those times and posting links if that's most successful or video if that's most successful, okay? But I can start to utilize this data to do more of what works. Does that make sense? And then on Instagram, you have the same feature. You have Instagram insights, and if you go into your settings, then you can click on insights. You can look and see how many people liked or commented on a post, and you can, again, look at the times and the dates that you've posted, so you can do more of what works, okay? It's really not rocket science, and the data is there for you. Once you've started posting, you have the information available to you for free as part of your account. Now, again, the insights are only available on Instagram if you have an Instagram business account. And you can convert, if you're using a personal Instagram, you can convert it to business. You don't lose any followers. You don't lose anything that you've already posted. It really just changes on the backside for your ability to, to get insights and have call to action buttons. It just adds additional business friendly features. All right, so how often should we post? On Facebook, one to two times per day. Instagram, one to three times per day. Instagram stories, two to five times per day. LinkedIn, one to two times per week. Anybody planning to do all that? Probably not. If you can do one to two posts a week on any of your social media, I would honestly be happy with that 
because I know that your days are very full and I do not expect anybody to be doing two posts a day. I think that that becomes a lot in an average human's life. But from the, you know, Sprout Social and the, the analytics that they have overall, the more often you're posting, the more people are going to see things. So that, those are the numbers. Whether or not that's doable is up to you. Number of hashtags. This you might find surprising. So this is hashtags on Facebook. And on this slide, you'll see the um, number of hashtags to get the most engagement on Facebook is one to two hashtags. Okay, one to two hashtags on Facebook. And I think a lot of people, um, myself included, not a big fan of hashtags on Instagram. I don't necessarily know that it, it works on Facebook, but let's compare it when we get to Instagram, how many hashtags, because a lot of us are, are posting data and content to Instagram and then having that automatically post to Facebook. So if you're posting, Instagram has more hashtags. And if you post, let's just say 20 hashtags on your Instagram post and have that same post push over to Facebook, now you've done 20 Instagram, Instagram hashtags that now you have 20 hashtags on Facebook also. On Facebook, one to two is the best number for engagement. So you've gone way above that simply because you're putting the same content in both places. Okay, something to keep in mind. On Instagram, the average number of hashtags for the best engagement is between nine and 10. Okay, so again, if I'm posting content to Instagram and I put nine or 10 hashtags because that's what works on Instagram, but then I have that same thing flow over to my Facebook page, I'm going way above the amount of hashtags I should use. Okay may want to just think about that if you are pushing stuff in between those two things, you may use less hashtags or you may want to, once it hits Facebook, go and remove some of the hashtags or don't cool. use hashtags at all. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Uh, reusing the same hashtag with different posts like Emily Diekman real estate team. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, encouraged or you want to stop doing that? No, I think that that's absolutely fine. It, for me, the hashtags always need to still be a mix though. It needs, you know, if y'all are gonna use the team hashtag, you also wanna have some hashtags that are like, you know, Austin real estate or, um, you know, for y'all Lakeway real estate, something like that, where you're mixing both the team one and the, the relevant ones for the area. But I wouldn't necessarily stop doing that. Are you saying like on Facebook, if you were only gonna do two, what would you keep? No, mainly on Instagram because I tend to use that one, but then whatever applies to the content I've posted, I'll add on. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that that's totally fine. As long as you stay within the nine to 10, you definitely want to make sure you have branding hashtags as well as hashtags related to the content. All right. When to post. Now, of course, these are generalities we you know, already talked about. You want to be sure that you're looking at your content, your insights to see what works best for your stuff, for your um, viewers, for your followers. But in general, on Facebook, this is at what I would consider a heat map. The darker the spot means the be better the time to post. And on this, you can see Wednesdays, one to two o'clock, and Friday at 11, Thursday at 5 p.m. Those are all really dark. So those are what overall for um, consumer goods, which is the category that I kind of put real estate in, of the ones that were available. Um, consumer goods, those are the best times to post on Facebook for engagement, right? People liking, commenting, sharing. Here's same stuff we just talked about. Best time, Wednesday, 1 p.m., Friday at 11 a.m. And if you think about, those kind of make sense, right? Middle of the week on Wednesday, 1 p.m., just came back from lunch, kind of tired. Let's go goof off a little bit. Um, other high engagement times, Wednesday from 1 to 3, Friday 10 to 11. Week is almost over, about to go to lunch. Um, most consistent engagement is 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. All those people are on Mopac. Lowest engagement is Sunday and every day from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., right? So that's interesting. Keep that number in mind. Lowest engagement every day from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., right? Now compare that when we get to Instagram, 
because you'll be able to tell that Facebook has a different audience than Instagram does based on the time that the lowest engagement. So we'll come back to that. Okay, Instagram. Again, heat map, darkest um, colors are the ones that um, have the most engagement. Give me one second. I'm going to make sure everybody's muted. All right. Most engagement on Instagram, Wednesday at 11. Pretty dark Wednesday at one, then really dark Wednesday at three. Then we go down to Friday, 11 and 12. Pretty interesting. 11 and 12 on Friday. Okay, so let's look at this. Best time for brands to post on Instagram, Wednesday at three. Most consistent engagement, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So what was consistent engagement on Facebook? Was Friday 10 to 11. So it's a little bit earlier here um, for Facebook. Instagram is 11 a.m. versus 10, and then this goes 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, high engagement on Saturday around 10 a.m. And then lowest engagement, here's what I was alluding to earlier. Lowest engagement every day from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Facebook was what, 10 to 4 a.m.? So they go to bed earlier and they sleep longer? Is that how that works? Let's see. 10 a.m. to 4, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., where Instagram, it's 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. So you can tell Instagram, even just by looking at the hours, Instagram is probably, and we already know, it is a younger audience that at least goes to bed later. All right, this is my favorite part. Hopefully you've made it this far with us. In 10 years of teaching social, social, I can do it, I just can't say it, social media content. In 10 years of teaching it, this is what I get asked the most. What do I post? And we have provided a content calendar for you. This is really just a skeleton for you to use as a starting point, modify as you feel appropriate. You can change this and make it your own, but this gives you a month at a glance to have something to post every single day. It's not twice a day, it's once a day, but you don't even have to think about it, okay? Whether it's sharing something from Community Impact or it's doing a spotlight on one of your vendors or someone from your sphere, these are things that you can post every day. What you'll notice is we also have uh, put consistency in this schedule. Every Monday is the same. Every Monday is Market Stat Monday. Every Saturday is where you're gonna spotlight a vendor or a client and you're gonna talk about their business, interview them, do links to their business. Particularly right now, we have so many small businesses that need help. This is a great way to provide focus on them. Okay, Market Stat Monday, you could even just be doing a, a little snapshot of the hot sheet from Matrix right now to show that there are still things selling, there are still things going under contract, selling going under contract, there are pendings, there are still souls, and there are new things coming onto the market. That's great information to share with people. That is good news stories that tells people real estate is still happening. Real estate is still an essential business. Okay, so that's something you can do every Monday. This, we've done the hard work for you. Now you just have to go get the data and plug it in. Okay, hopefully you find that helpful. I get really excited about that. All right. Content sources, additional things. Some of these are listed in the content calendar we just showed you, but Texas A&M Resource Center has great data and statistics. Um, TNT brochures, all of our brochures that you receive hopefully via email are available to you online. Um, that gives you a link to Texas National Title, but you can go to the website and go to Austin and under tools. All of our brochures are listed there. That's stuff that you are welcome to reuse and post to social media. Community Impact, obviously one of my favorites. HGTV, BreakthroughBroker.com. If you're not signed up through for Breakthrough Broker through TNT, please reach out to your sales rep because that is a ton of content that is copyright free um, from open house sign-ins, door hangers, postcards, uh, it's just social media content, memes, newsletters, you name it, Breakthrough Broker has it and they're constantly updating. So it's a fantastic source. 512do.com, National Calendar Day, that will give you like today is National Hug Your Dog Day. Um, that one's kind of fun because it just gives you something silly to post. 
and then matrix stats. And I will show you on these next slides how you can run if you've never run stats and matrix. It's really one of like the secret features that not everybody knows about that's extremely powerful. So I truly encourage you to look at this. When you log into matrix, you know, we mostly go into that second tab, that search tab. We go in, we do our search, maybe use the add edit for listings, and then we get out of matrix, go on with our life. Right now you have a little bit of extra time. I would encourage you to go to the third tab. That is the stats tab. You'll see over on the right side of this slide, all of the various stats that are available for you to run. And it's no more difficult than running a search. You can do neighborhoods, zip codes, cities. Um, you can do an MLS area. Anything that you would normally do in a search, you're able to do in stats, okay? Let's say we pick um, an MLS area. We could run list price, um, square foot average, and then we could do sold price per square foot average. We can run two stats at a time. Once we run it, we get this cool chart, like you see here, we look like an Excel wizard. And then second, we can click on the data tab and we get all the numbers, okay? That makes it really easy for you to share Market Stat Monday on, again, any area or um, city, zip code, school district that you want to share information about. Um, have a question on the content calendar, didn't see, um, anything about listings? Do you suggest posting? Yes, absolutely. Um, Kelsey, I do suggest posting your listings. That's not on there because that to me, that's going to be something that's an as needed. Um, I don't necessarily even have a particular day that I would recommend that. I would recommend you post your listings as you get them. And if y'all are not familiar within Matrix, when you're looking at your listing, when you go into add edit, and I would show you this, but I don't have listings obviously. But when you go into add edit and you're looking at your listing, down at the bottom where all the buttons are, the toolbar, there's a button that says share. When you click the share button, it gives you a link and that link can then be posted on social media. What's great about it is it automatically populates and does a preview, you know, just like on social media, you post a link, it does this cool preview with all the pictures. It's gonna link to your matrix listing with your descriptions, with your pictures, with your contact info, okay? So you wanna make sure you use that share link from matrix within when you go to add edit there's a share link grab that and post that to social media anytime you have a listing yes absolutely post those as they come okay so um, back to stats we can run two stats at a time we can do charts we can do the numbers for the data and this will give you more information if you want to do make things really fancy and go different colors and different styles of charts and then because I keep saying, take this little chart and post it on your social media. The easiest way to do that is to do a screen clip. And my favorite tool for that is Jing, J-I-N-G. With Jing, and here's a link, if you're gonna search for Jing on the internet, if you don't, um, don't wanna use this link, you can search Jing, J-I-N-G, and it's made by TechSmith, is the company that um, produces this software. It is free and it's screen clipping, so you can choose just that little chart portion from Matrix. The nice thing is, with Jing, you have additional annotation tools. Um, yes, there are Mac commands to do it, absolutely. Shift, I always forget, Command, Shift, and 4. Um, Johanna said Command, Shift, and 4 to do screen clip on Mac. Mac and PC both have built-in screen clippers. Uh, I like Jing just because I get to do these cool annotations. I can add arrows, uh, text, put boxes and highlights, and then when you save it, you can save it to your computer um, and it saves it as a picture file. That way you can post it right away to social media. You can send it um, via email, text it to somebody. But um, I just, I like Jing. The Mac and the PC snipping tools and things that are included work perfectly fine. And then scheduling content. If you really do want to be an overachiever and you want to do the two posts a day on social media, you would probably want to utilize a tool like Buffer, Layer, or Planoly. That way you can have content that's already pre-scheduled, ready to run, whether you're logged in or not, whether you're in front of your computer or not. Um, we have used here at TNT, we use Planoly to push our stuff to schedule to Instagram. And we use, um, 
we use one of the paid versions of Planoly because otherwise the scheduling actually means that it just sends you an alert and you still have to go in and make it post with the paid version. And I think we just use the $7 plan with Planoly it will automatically post for you. Some of them that are scheduled are not really scheduled with Instagram because Instagram's a little funny about that. It may say it's scheduled, but it's really just a reminder for you to come back and hit send, okay? So do look at that. There's three options for you, buffer, later, and planally. Keywords. I find I am not a very good writer, so I rely on tools like thesaurus.com. And um, this wheel I have saved, at one point I had it saved on my desktop, that it gives you other more powerful words, right? If you're just thinking fear, then you can look and see what other words are related to that that are more powerful, okay? nine words for shareable content and one of the great things is that when you post and somebody repost your stuff they're helping to give you more exposure so we do want you to have shareable content and nine words that make things shareable are secret tell us inspires take help promote increase create and discover okay those are all really powerful words when you hear help us you automatically start to listen, right? Well, how can I help? We all immediately want to help. And I think right now, that's particularly powerful. If you want to um, post about your people in your sphere, other small business owners that need assistance and restaurants to visit, help our community is a great way to start that. Write a hook. Y'all know what a hook is? A hook is something that grabs the attention, right? And makes somebody stick on your page. How to write a hook ask a question and give an answer, um, involve a contradiction, surprise readers with a common misconception, um, a common misconception that it's summer is the best time to buy or sell. But if you look at the statistics, prices actually start going up in March. And so it's actually a misconception that you should wait until May because in March, prices start to increase, but the inventory isn't as heavy. So somebody can still get more money for their house with having less competition. So there's a common misconception that when you run that data in stats and matrix, you can prove. Um, antidote and joke, dad jokes are always funny. Um, quote famous people, interesting facts, and limit to 125 characters or less. The less words you use, the less characters you use, the better you're gonna write because you're gonna have to get rid of the fluff and you're gonna have to focus on just the words that are important, okay? 125 characters or less, try that one. So here's an example of some great hooks um, and I'm giving myself away here. I am a member of this Facebook group called What Kristen Found. And Kristen is somebody that literally spends her whole day taking deals from Amazon and posting them into this huge group, okay? Um, this group has probably 100,000 members. I don't even know, but it's, it's ridiculous. I've gotten a bunch of our sales reps hooked on it. Kristen writes great hooks. And it's one of the reasons I feel like this group is so successful, that she can write about a trash can and you feel like, oh my gosh, I need this trash can. It's just that silly. So I never thought I'd be outside taking a picture of my trash can this morning, but here we are. I've had this thing for years and it's awesome. Blends in so well. It's a great big size without a huge footprint and it has a latching lid down to $37.49 today and everyone is grabbing this one up right now. So if you want one, go fast. Anyone else have this? How does that make you not wanna buy a trash can? You just didn't know when you woke up today, you were gonna to wanna to buy a trash can, but the way that she writes has such a great hook that it makes me wanna buy trash cans. Yeah, must be a salesperson, I agree. She is an amazing salesperson because I've bought so much stuff because Kristen posted it that I couldn't even tell you, like garbage bags, stuff that you just think, what? What am I doing? Um, yeah, we can have a whole conversation about that. But it really is based on the way that she writes. So utilizing some of those words that we've shown you are utilizing thesaurus and, and finding the words that are really impactful. All right, so here are a couple more things and we're just about wrapped up. The five most persuasive words in the English language. You probably could have guessed this one without me telling you, you. 
what do we like to talk about the most? Ourselves, right? I don't want to talk about you. I want to talk about me. And therefore, one of the most persuasive words is you. You, free, because, instantly, new. Those are words that are persuasive. Use those in calls to action, headlines, email subject lines, headings, opening sentences, and paragraphs. If you got an email today and the subject was you, wouldn't you want to open it and be like, me? What do you want to talk about me? Well, that's because it's persuasive. Best words for Facebook engagement, where, discount, tell us, take, deals, post, warns, inspires. Okay, when you see those words, it does make you kind of stop and go, oh, tell me more. All right, we are like right at 60 minutes. Even though we started a few minutes late, I talked super fast. And so if you have questions, I would encourage you to please drop them in chat right now, or you are welcome to unmute yourself and ask. But I will just remind you that this is a great time for you to sit down and schedule out content. You've got lots of, um, well, maybe a little bit. My kids are, are doing online classes today. So you've got some extra time right now. This is a great opportunity for you to go in and get on a schedule of posting content and pre-scheduling content. And we've given you an entire calendar to utilize to get started. So we thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Please make sure that you're watching for emails because we will have classes at least three days a week, uh, generally at about 11 o'clock on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. All right, the slide deck is available. I will, um, y'all are very welcome. I will post the slide deck info again. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, T-N-T content. I have to spell it correctly. And if you um, are not able to get it from the link, just let your sales rep know and they can email it to you. But we're so grateful that y'all were here today. So nice to see your faces. And we hope to see you again in class soon. Bye, you're welcome.